Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and today I want to take a look at a piece of lightweight cooking gear for camping and backpacking. That is the MSR Flex Skillet here in my hands right here. Like I said, this is a fry pan. It is lightweight. It has the name Flex because probably maybe the handle flexes. Now this shouldn't be confused with the MSR Quick Skillet, although if you're looking for that, hold on. That appears to be very similar in design, function, and materials. This is simply a larger version by maybe an inch or two, according to the specs. Uh, on this one, the specs for it are nine inch diameter by two and a half inches tall. And my actual findings are a little different than that. We'll get into that later. But in this video, I wanna run through the manufacturer specs, my findings, as far as specs go, and then also we'll run through my various experiences using this pan. Now I've been using this pan for about a year and a half, over a year and a half, taking it on various trips in multiple seasons, and I've really been enjoying it. First things first, let's talk about those specs. Now according to the manufacturer, again, this is a nine by two and a half inch deep pan. It is anodized aluminum with a non-stick coating. MSR has a proprietary name for this coating called Dorlight DX, but from what I can find, it's basically anodized aluminum that they then coat with a secondary coat of non-stick, kind of like a Teflon or similar material in there. Anodized aluminum is a term you may have heard of before in cooking. It is a bioelectrical process that binds to the metal. It's not a coating. It actually naturally increases the oxide level on the surface of the pan. All that aside, basically if something is anodized aluminum, it's more corrosion resistant, more durable in general, and scratch resistant. Although I should point out, that's not the scratch resistant coating they're referring to. That's a separate Teflon-y type stuff that goes on top, which totally can be scratched. So when using this pan, want to be careful. I always really avoid, if possible, using metallic items in there for cooking. If I was doing pancakes, which I've used this pan for, I would use something plastic and lightweight and kind of cheap like that and be careful not to uh, scratch the surface. I will admit that I've used tongs before for like hot dogs and stuff, but I'm very careful not to actually stir in the pot with it or do anything like that. Um, I have done that though, but really be careful because you will scratch this up. In fact, you may have caught a little wear and tear on that already. I'll get into that in a moment. But let's talk about that nine inch diameter by two and a half inches deep. When I actually measured this myself, not quite the case. I measured it several times, thought maybe I was losing my mind, but no, it is eight inches. If anything, maybe a hair over eight, but it's definitely nowhere near nine inch diameter. Unfortunately, I think that's a bit of a mistake on MSR's part. I'm assuming they're not trying to be misleading, but be aware of that if you're looking into this and you are familiar with another nine inch pan, this is eight inches. So you're gonna have a little less space than that. For me, I didn't even really ever realize that until I measured it later. And, I'm fine with it, but something to keep in mind. Also that two and a half inch depth, two inches. Now the interesting thing is, there's also a volumetric stat as well, as you can see on the bottom of the pan there, one and a half liters. And despite the fact that it's smaller in both height and width than they uh, list, it still does hold exactly a liter and a half. I did measure it myself. A liter and a half or six cups will fit in here and that is to the brim, I mean, all the way to the top. So for measuring purposes, maybe that comes in handy. As far as what I'd be comfortable boiling water in this, I would say four cups, as you can see in this shot here, four cups is still pretty close to the top. You also got to keep in mind, there's no lip on here for pouring. So if you were to take this along and try to double duty it for both frying stuff and heating up your water for say rehydrated meals, uh, keep that in mind. You'd want to be pretty careful when pouring that water out of there. Keep your hands free because until you get a nice flow going, you could get some spills and wouldn't want to get burnt in the backcountry. But that is some nice potential. You can heat up to a liter of water. Not bad. Speaking of boiling water in this, you may be wondering, is there a lid with it? Because that would speed things up for boiling, wouldn't it? There is not an included lid, uh, but it does work with the MSR Flex 3 and Flex 4 systems, which is basically a set of cooking gear for like cooking for a whole group. And uh, that comes with lids and those lids, from what they say, do work perfectly well with this. So if you incorporate this into your Flex 3 or 4 system, it should be fine to work with that lid. And they also say it nests well also, so that's nice. Now, of course, we can't leave out the important factor of weight. After blowing those other stats, I was a little nervous about this. 
but they listed at seven ounces. I put it on my scale and for the whole system here with the handle and the pot, it is 6.75 ounces. So it's actually a little less weight, but maybe that's because it's not as big as it should be. I don't know, but it's 6.75 ounces and that is about 190 grams for those of you who are more familiar with that. And it also breaks down the handle comes off, as you can see there. This makes it easier for packing, or maybe you want to be a gram weenie and just leave this handle behind. The handle itself, one and a quarter ounces, or 35 grams. The pot alone, 150 grams, or five and a quarter ounces. So there you go, you do have options to take this apart. Speaking of which, how does that work? It has a little clasp on there. White tube of plastic there, and there are some hooks on this handle. This, by the way, is the Talon handle, as they call it, and I believe that's the same handle on all those other aforementioned Flex 3 and 4 systems. So this is probably the same handle on a lot of the MSR gear. Clips right on like so. Pull it back, you hear that click, and now it is locked in, and it won't come undone, which is nice, especially if you saw the video where we use this a lot. Uh, Mike was using a different pot that didn't quite have that handle system and uh, he had some issues to say the least, but I won't spoil that. So that's the handle system, that's nice, and as you can see, it does flip forward into the pan. Now I'm a little worried and uh, uptight about my interior there, so I will usually pack a paper towel and put that in there so that A, you get a little less rattle, and B, just less chance that you're gonna mess with that coating in there. But honestly, you may find it easier to pack if you take this handle and slide it somewhere. Just don't lose it, of course. And then this, you can put other items in that are soft, maybe make it a little more packable in your pack. Also, if you have a bear canister and you have to do a hike with that, uh, double check the diameter of your bear canister lid, keeping in mind that uh, it's gotta be probably 7.75 inches or less, your bear can lid. Uh, you might be able to stack this right on top and really save some volume that way. Let's get into the actual cooking experience I've had with this and we can also talk about some other options, gear options, just for uh, comparison's sake. Now, like I said, I've used this on several trips and with several stoves. Heat dispersion in this, pretty nice. It's aluminum. Now, you can go lighter with titanium, but let's bring this up real quick. Titanium, while lighter than aluminum, it does not have nearly the same or as good of heat dispersion properties. So you're going to get more even cooking with something made out of aluminum or even stainless steel than you ever will with titanium, even though it's lighter. Also, keep in mind your stove is a factor. I've used this both with my $5 generic pocket rocket style stove, but it's generic guy, it doesn't have a wide flame dispersion pattern on it. It's great for boiling water. It's quick at it, it's effective, it's been working for years. But for doing, say, pancakes or something where you want the whole bottom of the pan to be bathed in heat, while this does really try its best to disperse that heat, um, that flame pattern on that particular stove is like that big right there, and I was getting a definite hot spot. Let's call it well done area on my pancakes. Use the same pot with the MSR Whisper Light and MSR Rapid Fire. Both of those really just that classic Whisper Light design. Better heat pattern coming out of those and cooked great. We've done scrambled eggs in this. We've done quesadillas type things, pita pockets, sausages for breakfast, all kinds of stuff like that. The non-stick coating really does come into play there. Just be careful with that. Wipe it out lightly afterwards with the aforementioned paper towel and you should be good to go and it should stay in good shape. But remember before I said I'll talk a little bit about the coating there and if you can see, I'm losing some on the edge there and it really made me think because I was so careful. Like even when I used those tongs, like I said, I was just flipping those dogs. I wasn't resting it on the edge or anything like that. And there's no hint of anything on the inside. It's just on that edge and it's not on the outside edge either, which I've used a windshield, aluminum windshield with this before. So I thought maybe the windshield, but no, the windshield touches the outside. The only thing I can think of, and this is a tip for anybody else out there, I slide this into the back pocket of my backpack where there's like a mesh pocket and then the body of the backpack, which is like a 70D, pretty heavy grade material because I use my larger pack when I take this out on uh, more fun trips with heavier weight. I think that that slight abrasion on that 70D backpack material has slowly worn down the edge of this. So keep that in mind it will eventually uh, rub off, it does appear. So from now on, I'm probably gonna be careful to maybe, maybe even look into putting this in a stuff sack of some kind or anything. Because what I don't want is for that to start migrating and start working its way into messing up the interior of the 
pan, which I really like. I have enjoyed this a lot, so I want to keep it alive. Price point on this is going to fluctuate like anything else out there, right? But I think if you look around, you'll probably have no problem finding it for $30 or less and uh, even less for that quick skillet version. But let's talk about that really quick because I'm a little concerned. The quick skillet stats are the same alleged depth of two and a half inches with a smaller diameter of 7.75 inches. Now I have to wonder, I'm almost at 7.75 inches with my alleged nine inch flex skillet. So how big is the quick skillet? I don't know, I don't have one to measure, but maybe somebody could measure theirs and post in the comment section below because I'm curious about that. What size is that guy really? So something to think of. Now, let's talk about other options, right? Just to put this whole in perspective with the flex skillet. Now, of course, you could always go with just a pot from home. This is a regular old skillet. Not a super fair comparison because this is a 10 inch skillet. I did measure this and that's allegedly a nine. So this just for comparison's sake does weigh one pound, five ounces or around 600 grams. So that's quite a lot more. Now uh, you could get one of these say for like 10 bucks and guys do cut the handles off these. That's an option. This handle feels like it's a lot of the weight. So you could get just a regular fry pan, cut the handle off, uh, but then you wouldn't have a handle. So I really do like the integrated or option to leave at home handle on the flex skillet, but something to keep in mind. Then of course you could always go to Army Navy surplus type store, five bucks will get you the GI mess kit in uh, aluminum here, it folds out. Now this actually has the top lid which acts as your plate in addition to the fry pan. The whole thing weighs 15 ounces or you can bring along just this skillet part and it would be nine ounces, which is 2.25 ounces more than the flex skillet and as you can see it's not quite the same surface area in there but that's a cheap option out there for you if you don't mind about same weight for a little less space and uh, you can bring this along for another eight ounces and you got a plate bowl too so you could really kick it old school with some GI stuff. One more thing I should point out if you are concerned about that non-stick coating or I should say you just don't want to be concerned with it then check out the MSR Alpine fry pan. It is their stainless steel no non-stick coating version, or I should say alternative to this type of pan. It's stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about scratching it up and you'll probably get better heat dispersion because it has a heavy aluminum plate welded right on the bottom, just like one of your pans that you probably already have at home where it has that thicker base. So that's an option, similar price. It's listed at eight inches and it does weigh 12 ounces. So it weighs a little more, but the size is about the same and you can beat it up a little more and cook some heavier stuff in it. Also, I'd probably be more comfortable putting that one in say a campfire. I don't know if I'd wanna get this one this hot. If anybody has tried that, let me know, but I don't know that I would wanna really torch this thing up on a campfire. Uh, I might even melt the little locking mechanism inside the handle there. So I wouldn't be apt to do that, but with the Alpine fry pan, I probably would. So that's my thoughts on that. The MSR flex skillet, I really do enjoy it. Beware, the specs are a little off, but it performs really well, it cooks well, it's not terribly heavy, and it goes in your pack pretty easily. So if you're looking for something like that, I'd say it's definitely worth checking out. Till next time, I'm Syntax77. Have fun out there.